Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Tier 5 British Heavy Premium aircraft, the Bowfighter 5, which is currently on offer in the Premium Shop, and hope to help you decide whether it's worth your money. Starting from the 11th of June, a few days ago now, until the 28th of June, you can, if you wish, buy in the premium shop for World of Warplanes the Bristol Bowfighter 5 Special Bundle. And if we quick look and see what that uh, bundle contains, it has the plane, of course, a hangar slot to accommodate it, 2,000 gold, five steel supply crates. And if you want to know more about steel supply crates, please see my earlier video about those. Bonus items, and be aware that if you already have this aircraft, you won't receive these bonus items. A 100% trained crew member with five free skill points, quite useful if you don't have a pilot, but then if you're buying this, you're probably buying it as a crew trainer, so why would you need a pilot? And an exclusive paint scheme. Well, if it's the one that I've got, it's not that exciting, so don't worry, you're not missing out. If we quickly look at that, now that was for €26.99, I believe, and if we quickly look at um, the entry specifically for the United Kingdom, and being for the, from the United Kingdom, I would. That translates to £23.09. And, and the question for you is, is this bundle worth it? And hopefully this video will help you answer that question. Let's give you a little bit of history about the, this Bristol Bowfighter. It was originally a reward aircraft in a marathon, but before that, it was actually meant to be the Bowfighter 5 IM. And IM would stand for Iron Maiden. And originally this turret was meant to accommodate Eddie, the mascot for Iron Maiden. Well, unfortunately for uh, the World of Warplanes team, they discovered that the licensing deal with Iron Maiden had lapsed, so they weren't able to put the mascot in the turret. And some of you may regret that. Personally, I'm not one of them. So, without casting further aspersions on our Iron Maiden, let's have a look at some numbers. And here we have a spreadsheet um, which has all of the Tier 5 heavies laid out. So in column C and D, for instance, you have the Bowfighter 5, and next to it the regular Tech Tree Bowfighter, next to that the ME210, and so on for the rest of the heavies. How did I compare the aircraft? I moved the configuration to stock in every case. If ordnance could be mounted, I mounted it, and there's a performance penalty with mounting ordnance. You're slower, less maneuverable, and some people like to take the ordnance off the aircraft in order to gain performance. I'm not going to discuss that in this video, but it isn't a possibility. I removed all of the equipment from all of the aircraft. I put untrained pilots and gunners into the aircraft, and all the modules are top modules on the aircraft. As far as, the color, as far as the color coding is concerned, anything marked in green is best in class, anything in cyan or light blue is second best in class, and anything that is marked in lilac or light purple is third best in class. I'm going to talk about armament last, so let's talk about ordnance first. And the short, long and short of it is, the Bowfighter 5 has no ordnance and therefore very limited ground attacking capability. Very unlike the Tech Tree Bowfighter, which packs a considerable wallop as far as ground attacking is concerned. It's good news on survivability. Best in class. 420 hit points is best in class shared with the Tech Tree Bowfighter. The damage resistance is out on its own at 64, and the fire resistance is best in class as well, although almost all of the heavies have very similar figures for fire resistance with the exception of the Ki-45, which likes to go up like a firework if you breathe on it. I'm afraid, however, that's pretty much the end of the good news. As far as airspeed is concerned, this is pretty much the second worst in class. And it's only better than the Tetri Bowfighter, and that's with the ordnance um, uh, mounted. I suspect if I took the ordnance off the Bowfighter, it would almost certainly come close to man matching the Bowfighter 5. Everything else, with the possible exception of the SE-100, outclasses the Bowfighter 5 for speed. With respect to manoeuvrability, it's on a par with many of the heavies. It's even slightly better than the, the ME210, for instance, but it's a long way behind the two American heavies and the Japanese heavy. Uh, these are much more manoeuvrable aircraft, as you can see. The Japanese is best in class, and no surprise there. That's its uh, key attribute, uh, as well as that big gun, of course. And it's still not good news about altitude performance. This is uh, 
worse than several of the aircraft, the ME210, the two American heavies, the Skyrocket and the, the Lightning, um, the BF110E as well, which means that heavies are going to get above you and dive on you and cause you a lot of trouble and you don't really have the maneuverability to um, avoid that. So you're going to have to have eyes in the back of your head at all points in the game. So given that most of those figures with the exception of the ordnance, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, with the exception of the survivability are, are fairly average or even mediocre, you're hope, probably hoping that the gun armament is excellent to compensate. You're going to be disappointed. The Bowfighter V, the forward armament is the second worst in class. The only uh, heavy with weaker armament is the F5F Skyrocket, and of course that's quite manoeuvrable. There's an interesting point here though about the turret. It's best in class. Although it has the same turret in theory as the Tetri Bowfighter, the World of Warplanes team have seen fit to buff the figures on this so that the DPS is best in class at 128, and the range is third best in class at 1969. This means a couple of things. Pursuing enemy fighters can be deterred or even killed when they're out of range by this turret. And the only other aircraft which is really capable of doing that is the SE-100, although it's worth noting that given a 1,000 foot extra range, the SE-100 can probably deter even the BF-109E from being, chasing it, whereas probably the Bowfighter V can't. That's a useful um, attribute. And the other thing that this turret does, which no other turret uh, uh, apart from the Bowfighter, the Tektri Bowfighters does, is swing round through 180 degrees and join in on an attack on an aircraft you are shooting at. Which means, in theory, your 180 DPS can go up to 308, but it's difficult to manage. It's I find that it tends to be only at short ranges that the turret swings forward to engage. And there is a downside. If you're engaging an aircraft you're attacking and you're also engaged from behind and you decide that you want to shoot at the aircraft behind, it takes quite a long time to swing this turret back to the rear of the aircraft if it's been pointing forwards helping you in an attack. The turret is really the, the unique point about this aircraft. Um, However, it's not enough to compensate for the rest of the weaknesses, I, sus I, I would suggest. So that's enough about the numbers, and I think it's time we had a look at a battle. However, I'm going to give you a word of warning here. In order to obtain a battle um, for showcasing in this video, I had to play this aircraft a, a dozen times or more, and only two or three of those battles were suitable for inclusion in the, in the video. Now, I want to say straight away, I'm not the best player of heavies, and good heavy players will do better in this aircraft. However, if you're a newer player or a less experienced player looking to see whether you want this aircraft in your hangar, my experience should inform you that you can't expect to buy this aircraft and be a monster in the skies. And the battle I'm going to show you is on the Scorching Sands map. This is the Desert Wind um, variant, which has uh, a central garrison flanked by two military bases. By now you're probably aware that the military bases are by far and away the most important sectors on this map. They confer the standard three resources every five seconds, but in addition they launch rocket strikes on ground targets in nearby sectors, it says. Well, what it doesn't say is that military bases don't fire at each other, so the only thing that the military base is going to be firing at during the game is the garrison if it's owned by the enemy. The garrison itself is of limited strategic value. It conveys the three resources every five seconds, Tactically, it's not even the gateway to the other sectors. It is possible to go right around the garrison and get to the opposite military base. What can happen, though, is that it becomes tactically important because if both teams own one military base, this is the tipping point that can decide the battle. It goes without saying that if a team manages to get both military bases for the majority of the game, they're going to win. So if we look at the order of battle, we can see that I'm bottom tier. We have a Ki-88, a premium Japanese aircraft, and not a particularly manoeuvrable one, interestingly. That plays a bit more like a, a BF-109. Uh, and a Dornier 217M bomber. 
and I also have a ground attacker at tier 5, the IL-2 modified, which basically means it has a tail gunner, whereas the standard one doesn't. On the enemy team, we have a P-38J Lightning at tier 6, uh, an IL-T-2T, oh, an IL-2T, I'll put my teeth in a moment, um, for ground attacking, and we have a flight in tier 5 Hurricane 2 and an XP-44. So it's quite an interesting balance. So here we go into battle, and it won't surprise you that I'm going to go straight to uh, a military base. I'm equidistant more or less from both of them, so I swing towards one, and then of course change my mind, as I'm going to do, and go to the other one. I begin to gain altitude, and uh, the Bowfighter 5, like the Tech Tree counterpart, is a pretty sluggish, cli sluggish climber. And that's something to bear in mind. If you go low, it's going to take you quite a while to get back up. So you only really want to go low in this aircraft when it's the right time. And I spy the uh, heavies, which seem to be flying away. And the reason for that is because enemy aircraft are coming in at the back. And immediately the P-38 uh, Lightning, the Tier 6, flies across me. And then decides to pay me very little attention and becomes my first victim. By now it's become clear that the enemy have invested quite heavily in taking this uh, military base, as indeed they should, and the work becomes quite hot. I'm able to dispose of a, of a zero flying high, and losing some of its maneuverability advantage, and I swing around to see what else I can engage. And this is the second time that the heavy air defence heavy has been able to shoot me. Fortunately, the Bowfighter decides to pursue the air, air Defence Heavy rather than me. I decide to get rid of the pesky Air Defence Heavy. And then go looking for the Bowfighter. He's run away and presented himself as a target. And as the bomber flies past him, I decide to take that on as well. You can see the turret becoming into option, and there you can see the turret is facing forward. So if I get into the right configuration, it will add its DPS to my forward firing weapons, which is quite helpful as I take on the lightning and shoot it down for the second time. Swinging round, we're looking for the bomber that we were going to chase previously until the lightning intervened. and disappointingly I'm not quick enough to, uh, in killing the bomber and I would suspect that means that the enemy ground attacker the human player in the ground tier 6 ground attacker is at this uh, base and has taken out ground targets whilst I've been up the top trying to clear out uh, the n numerous aircraft that came in at high altitude at the moment though it's okay our team has got the other military base although it's under threat we've also got the central garrison for the moment so I'm going to go in and have uh, take out the human ground attacker. But I notice he's going close to ground here, so I decide not to risk getting bomb trapped. If that's a skilled player, he'll drop a, an aircraft on the mountain and take me out. So I take another target of opportunity, and then come over the top of the mountain, looking for the, the ground attacker uh, once again. And during that time, we've lost the central garrison. That's not really surprising when both teams have a military base, so I'm not too concerned. And having seen what I've done, the ground attacker throws himself into the ground and makes uh, a present of his final hit points to me without me having to shoot him. However, at this point I'm now I'm low altitude and I'm being chased and I'm not going to get away. So I spawn the original spawn point again. Of course there are no airfields on this map so I don't have a choice. And I'll decide to go to the uh, military base that I originally attacked in order to try and uh, win it for my team. As you can see, I've got quite a healthy set of personal points. In fact, I'm highest in game. I've been quite busy. And it's important I take this military base now because I can see that the one that we have owned since the start of the game is on the point of falling and probably will fall. Fortunately the pattern on the air defence heavy is, is favourable so I'm able to shoot down first one and then the second one quite quickly. Technically 
um, I didn't flip that base, it had already flipped. I was just able to kill the air defence aircraft before it exploded. And exactly as I thought, as I took this base, um, the other military base fell. But again, we have the centre, so if we just have a quick look at the scores, we can see we've got a healthy lead of two, uh, 100 points. So provided we keep maintain the status quo, and that means taking back the, the centre um, without letting the enemy get the benefit of it for too long, we should win this game. So keeping relatively high, I'm looking for targets of opportunity. I decline to go down after the fighter. I keep an eye on the enemy lightning and then set about on uh, the bomber. What we mustn't do is lose this other military base and let the enemy get superiority. swing around to see what else is threatening threatening me. In fact, I'd had a quick look. I pressed the ALT key to see that this was another bomber, otherwise I would have probably ha um, changed what I was doing, abandoned the bomber and attacked what was coming to attack me. And it's a useful tip. When you've got red arrows around you and you want to know what type of aircraft is uh, present, press the ALT key. And you'll see, as I've just done there, you'll get the symbols for the aircraft. So there's a pair of multi-rolls uh, to the left, uh, and by doing that earlier on I established that the second aircraft that was behind me when I was attacking the bomber was another bomber and therefore unlikely to be much of a threat to me. And now we've flipped the centre again. I've kept this military base secure and I'm going to continue doing that. And both of the multi-rolls pay me not the slightest bit of attention so I take their aircraft away from them. Pay attention, boys. Maybe you'll keep your aircraft a bit longer next time. Now the bomber flies towards me, so again, I set about that. And dispose of it. And as we can see, this is one of those games where military bases, one each, are uh, owned by the teams, and the centre has now become tactically important, when strategically it's of very little value, because it serves as the tipping point between the two teams. Working over another bomber, the winged legend notification goes through. That's well, the first time I think I've seen any member member of the members of the flight. I take out the ground attacker. I choose not to fly into the pillar. That was actually closer than perhaps I made it look there. The rear turret begins sets to work. And as I haven't mentioned it a great deal, you can see that it's actually quite tricky to get to engage. If it engaged more, this would actually be a significant advantage for this aircraft. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I take out the human ground attacker. Very nearly get clobbered by one of my own air defence heavies. But it's the end of the game. We've got 15,740 points and a grade 1 uh, heavy fighter result. It's a nice game. So let's review the result of this battle. And if we look in the middle, we can see it was a five chevron battle, or if you prefer, a grade one heavy fighter. Best result possible. 153,394 credits gross, of which 51,000, a little bit more than 51,000, uh, were due to the premium account bonus. If we look in the message box, we can see that 925 credits were expended on repairs due to the aircraft being shot down once. No other expenses because I use prepaid consumables. Experience 3,627 with bonus and 181 uh, free experience with a bonus. Some nice medals here, Winged Legend, Hero of the Sky, no tokens because I'd already earned those on other games earlier in the day. Turning to the personal score tab, we can see that all of the class specific missions were uh, completed. 15,740 personal points, one sector captured, 17 aerial targets destroyed, 5,638 damage to aerial targets, inflicting 31 critical hits, destroyed once, 540 capture points, and that was divided as follows, 280 for defending and 260 for attacking. 
If we look to the team score tab, we can see that, that was enough for first place on my team. Decent contribution from the bomber on my team there. And on the enemy team, quite a good game by the enemy ground attacker. So now you've seen the numbers for the Bow Fighter 5 and you've seen it in action. You've learned that the novel, or at least nearly novel feature of the aircraft is the turret that Iron Maiden's mascot Eddie was supposed to occupy, with best in class DPS, a good range of fire, and the ability to fire forwards and help you attack other aircraft, although unfortunately that's not under your control. What that means is that you'll be able to, in many situations, kill or, det det or at least deter pursuing enemy fighters, and the turret will help you attack aircraft if you can get in the right aspect or approach for your attack. Unfortunately, there's not much else that impresses about the plane. True, it's robust with best-in-class survivability figures, but it's slow. It's not particularly maneuverable. It has rather limited altitude performance, including a fairly poor um, climb rate. And you haven't even got the option of ground attacking, which you have in the regular tech tree bow fighter. Given that this aircraft can face specialised ME410s, the Tier 6 Heavy, and now the new Volti XP54, more and more of which is a, are appearing in the game, specialised, less experienced players will certainly struggle to do well in this aircraft. I struggle to do well in it, albeit I'm not the, um, the game's best heavy player. I'd say that unless you're keen to get the steel crates that come in the bundle that's currently on offer as I make this video, something the worth of which only you can judge for yourself, this aircraft is strictly one for the collectors. I hope you found something of value in this video and that if you did, you'll come back and see more of my content in the future. But until then, this is the Noble Q, signing out.